Hello everybody, Jeff Davis. I'm one of the instructors here at American Realty Academy. We're talking about math and how to pass the math, math portion of the Arizona real estate exams, or for that fact, any exam really. We've come up with the seven steps, if you've watched our videos in the past, about how to work your way through math problems. It's very simple to recapture, read the entire question, identify what it is they want. In this case, is we're gonna start talking about percentages, whole numbers, small numbers. We're then gonna write out what they give to us, we're going to try and eliminate any white noise or undo unnecessary information. We're going to then input the pieces into the puzzle to try and figure out what it is they gave us versus what we need. We're going to verify what they gave us, what we have, and does it match what they're asking for. And then lastly, we're going to look at the answers. The reason why I always try to look at the answers is, is because if you see four big numbers and you came up with a small number, all right, well, we've done something wrong. If you see a bunch of small numbers, and we came up with a big number, all right, we've done something wrong. So it's very simple, it's a double check. So the first things I wanna talk about is a lot of people have forgotten or were never trained math properly. Fractions, fractions scare a lot of people and they're really quite simple. If I say I'm gonna give you half of a pizza pie, in your mind, you can automatically assume, okay, I get this half, that half belongs to you. That's simple. But when it comes to mathematics, we start to freak out. Don't, one half, on your calculator, if you did not know this, is one divided by two. Simple. One half is one, by, one divided by two, and the calculator is gonna spit out 0.5. Great, 0.5 is one half. How else could you write 0.5? 0 0.50. Simple, another 0 0.50 would be what? 50%. So if you're studying, you did the math portion, and you came to me and says, hey Jeff, I, I, I didn't do well on math, I got 0 0.5. Well, we don't talk like that. We don't say we got 0.5, do we? No, we automatically convert it by saying it's 0.50, or I'm sorry, 50%. Same thing is true down here. If I tell you, okay, there's gonna be 100 questions on the exam, and I want you to get at least two thirds right, we kind of know how many we need to get right, but how do we do the math? Two thirds is two divided by three, and that gives us 0.667. How else do we write 0.667? 66.7%. Final one example, three quarters. Pearson View loves three quarters because you gotta get a 75% or higher in order to pass your tests and your exams. So 75% is 0.75. Well, three divided by four gives us 0.75, and when you pass your Pearson View exam, which I know you're going to, this can say, congratulations, you passed. End of story, that means you got 75.1 or higher. Done. Next thing, everybody likes talking about their commissions. It's the simplest thing in the world. We can all do the commission math. If I tell you, you sold a $100,000 house and you got a 3% commission, you could automatically say, uh, okay, I got $3,000. How'd you do that? 100,000 times 3% in your calculator, it'll give you the right answer. But a lot of times they don't have the percent button on some calculators. So we convert the 3% to 0 0.03. Same thing we just learned up here. 6% is 0 0.06. If I say, oh, tricky, 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 3.5% is the total commission, bonus to you, got an extra half a percent. That's simply written out 0 0.035. Flip side of it, if somebody says, well, I'm gonna sell my house and I'm gonna pay you 3%, how much am I gonna get? Well, that's simple. That's 100% of the sales price minus my 3% commission. That means the seller is gonna get 97% or 0.97. I know this seems simple. Let me tell you what trips people up. When they fail to remember that the sales price is always what the seller is going to get after paying commissions or fees or whatever. So we wanna start with 100% the sales price minus the commissions, that is what the sellers are gonna get. Very simple, but a lot of people forget it and then they get the questions wrong. Down here, we're gonna talk a little bit real fast about how to put percentages in to the Pearson View questions. Pearson View likes to ask questions, simple. Here's a seller's loan amount, here's their interest rate, 
what are their payments? Now the question is, what are their payments? By reading the entire question, Pearson View is gonna ask you, what are their yearly payments? They might ask you, what are their monthly payments? That one word, yearly or monthly, is gonna change your answer. So here's an example. A $200,000 loan, and the seller, I'm sorry, the buyer or seller has an interest rate of 3.25%. How do we type that into our calculator? 200,000 times 0 0.0325. Remember, we gotta move that decimal place two times, two times. We're gonna come up with, over a period of one year, on a $200,000 loan at 3.25%, that seller is going to pay $6,500. I'm making this easy. I'm not compounding. I'm not doing that. This is math made easy. Okay. So for those of you who are advanced mathematics, you're laughing at me right now. I get it. Stick with me. One year, they're going to pay $6,500. Is that what they wanted? Did Pearson View ask us for yearly? Probably not. They probably asked us for monthly. So over a period of a year, $6,500, how many months in a year? 12. To get the monthly payment, we divide the total, divided by 12, we come up with our monthly payment, 541.67. Read the question, because I'm pretty much gonna guarantee you that one of the test answers Pearson View is gonna say, 6,500. And if you quickly see 6,500 on your scratch paper and you see 6,500 on Pearson View, you're thinking, oh, done, nailed this exam. But we failed to read the question, we failed to identify what it was they were asking. They're asking us for the monthly. Don't, make, don't miss the easy ones. Over here, one of the biggest challenges that real estate students have is when we talk about discount points and we talk about loan origination points, points. They're simple, it's a fraction. If I'm gonna tell you it's gonna be one eighth or one point, how do you do that? How do you figure that out? Well, your lender says, okay, uh, we're gonna give you a 4% interest rate. And you say, I'd really like to get a little bit lower in straight. Lender's gonna say, okay, fine. I'm gonna charge you a point. One point is gonna either raise or lower your interest rate by, ready for it? One divided by 8.125. I'd, like I'd like a lower in straight. How much lower? I'd like a quarter percent lower. 25% lower, it's a full quarter. One quarter is also two divided by eight. That's gonna be 0.25 or 25%. Fast forward, one half. If you've got a 4% interest rate on your current loan and you get a phone call from the lender and says, I can beat your current interest rate and I can get you a full half a percent less, you went from 4% down to 3.5%, but be careful. There's probably costs involved. And we'll talk more about costs on points later, but the basic math doesn't change. If you have six total points, it's six divided by eight. That gives you 0.75. If I told you that uh, we're gonna split a pizza and I get six eighths, well, I want you to start realizing, okay, that means you're gonna get three quarters of the pizza? That's exactly right. One full point is always eight divided by eight. So points, one eighth, two eighths, three eighths, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Eight eighths gives you one full percentage point. That's it for right now. That's our Math Made Easy on math and basic calculations.